So hello, my name is Rob, and this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the, I guess, annoying younger brother of yellow, and that is orange. Now, this video is going to be aimed at beginners and people who can tend to struggle with these lighter colors, things like your whites, your yellows, your oranges, ones with, you know, really, really thin paint. This is gonna be a really, really good tutorial on how to get some good cheating tips, how to thin your paints, how to mix your paints a little bit, and just how to apply it to get a really, really good effect. Um, there's loads of ways to paint orange. This is just how I've been doing it. I've been painting up these Skurgan True Bloods from Warcry, and I really, really like the orange capes. I had a lot of people asking me how I do the orange capes. It's really, really easy. Um, it's not the quickest method, but methods like this do demand a little bit of patience. So without further ado, let's just get started. So orange, there are a ton of paints out there in loads of different ranges. And sometimes it can be quite confusing to know where to start. Orange doesn't need to be that difficult. It's really not that difficult once you know what you're doing. Um, there is an argument for painting red and just adding yellow until you you know, work your way well up to a highlight. I'm not gonna be doing that method, but I might show it in a future video. Now, to start with, the first thing we are going to need to do is whatever you're doing, is you're gonna need a primer. And for this, when you look at orange, it's kind of smack bang in the middle of you know, your yellow and your red. That's how we make orange. So I find in this instance, mid-tone colors are fantastic. What I'm talking about here, um, I'm gonna be using this. This is Colorforge. I love these sprays, they're fantastic. You get a lot in them, a lot of bang for your buck. If you wanna buy them, uh, I'll leave links in the description box below along with any information. Before I forget, don't forget to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. But mid-tone colors work really, really well for orange. If you want something brighter, then use a white. If you want something darker, then by all means do go for a black, but you are gonna need more coats of orange. And if you're here, you're probably struggling to paint orange as it is in the first place. So maybe not the best starting position for it. The first thing we are going to do is you need to pick a color that you want to use. So I've got my model here. He's been sprayed. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna look and I'm gonna show you on this little bit of cape section that I've got dangling down here. I want a really, really nice kind of bright orange. Now, with things like Citadel, and I'm gonna be using a lot to Citadel range for this as it's just easier to work with. Um, I'm gonna start with Jacaro Orange. This is a base paint, so it's a little bit thicker, so it's a bit more forgiving. And the first thing we're gonna to need to do is, is get a really, really strong base coat. To do this, you're gonna build up multiple layers of the same color. Now, to do this is a really, really good cheat if you don't already have one, a wet palette. A wet palette will take out the pain of watering your paint down or a little tile as you can see here that I use as a little bit of a, a hard palette. The reason why I like wet palettes is because you need to do very little to them. You don't need to add extra water. The palette kind of does that for you. So you naturally get a smoother finish. If you struggle with thinning your paints, get yourself a wet palette. Honestly, they are a godsend. Also, if you want one, once again, I am an affiliate of Redgrass. There's links below. Um, it helps me out and hey, treat yourself, why not? Um, but the first thing I am gonna do, as you can see here, I've got my Chikero Orange on my wet palette and I'm just gonna go over. This will dry slightly translucent, build up your colors slowly and wait for each coat to dry fully before applying the next one. What we need is what we've got here and this is a solid base coat. Now, this is kind of like the hardest step you all have to do here because this step demands patience. If you're gonna do things like whites, yellows, oranges, and some reds, the, the trick is, is here is just to slow down. And you know, there isn't an easy one coat solution for this. Um, you're just gonna avoid streaks and stuff like that. So just take your time. Now, there's a few steps you can do here if you want to, and a few places we can go with this. We can use washes. Citadel makes some really, really good washes that complement orange really well, like Cassandora Yellow and Fugan Orange. However, I'm gonna be looking at the contrast side of things. There are loads of contrast paints and alternatives and speed paints out there that do a very similar thing. 
Um, I'm not going to be using the Vallejo or the Army Painter for this method. I'm going to be using Contrast. However, I will say is just pick a range that you're happy with and that works for you. That's going to be half of the battle is working with paints. The ones I use here, I use regularly. Uh, I really, really like, um, especially the Nuclear Orange from Army Painter. I think, you know, they're, they're great colors. But in this instance, I am going to stick to Citadel. Now, the other thing we are going to do, we're going to get some contrast medium. And we're not going to mix these two colors together like we conventionally would. What we're actually going to do is we're going to paint the contrast on and then we're going to wipe away all the excess with contrast medium while it's on the model. Almost like a bit of a reverse wet blend. And you can see what I mean here. The main thing is to get a nice bit on your brush. You don't want your brush overloaded, but you do want a good amount on here. We're going to try and work in small sections. And the trick with contrast is to not work it once it's already been applied because that's when you start getting the blotching and streaks and it can look a bit iffy don't worry i'm i'm going to show you how to fix that in this video but just be aware that that's you know what happens is when you're constantly moving the paint around because it's already started to dry you get these weird little tide marks but as you can see here i painted on this section and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to wash a brush out and then i'm going to dip it into my contrast medium i haven't got a lot on my brush and all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it over that raised section. And what it's going to do, it's almost going to blend with the contrast. And as you can see, it's giving me a natural highlight. It's really smooth. You get a really nice transition with it. If you just wanted to stop here, you could. And you know what? You'll actually end up with quite a nice looking miniature. However, I am going to push it a little bit further. I'm just going to show you what I've, I've kind of done and how I've been doing mine. Once you've worked around the model, if we spin it round, you can see that we've already got some really, really nice highlights or like already. And the nice thing about the contrast is because everything's nice and wet, it takes ages to dry. It's really forgiving. You've got loads of time to play around with it. And that's a really, really good thing in this instance. Now, naturally, what you would kind of think that you would do next, um, not that paint, Rob kind of got that one wrong, um, is go brighter. What I like to do is rather than apply a highlight, we're going to go back to Jacaro Orange again on the wet palette and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use those highlights that that contrast medium has kind of given us and I'm just going to apply some of our original base color just to kind of get that really bright kind of highlight effect now this is really unnatural um, in like painting cloth doesn't work like this but I think in this instance it works really well to complement the model. Games Workshop put like a lot of these dramatic folds in their capes and stuff like that. Depending where the light would come from, you, you know, always get like this. But I do think it shows it off quite well. So that's what we're going to go with in this video. Now, as you can see here, and I'll show you the model every single time. Once again, it's looking really, really cool. Um, now, this is where things kind of get, I think a lot of people stumble a little bit, is that you would naturally think that once you've you put on your base color is to go a shade brighter, you would naturally use that system. And the Citadel system is really, really good for this. But in some instances, I don't believe it works as well. So you would think that you would kind of work your way down these to a, a really bright highlight color. However, that's not the case. And that's not what I'm going to be doing in this video. And I think this is why my oranges work so well and it's, it's hit home for a lot of people. I'm using Chikara Orange again. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix a little bit of yellow in for it. Now this kind of divulges into that method what I was talking about earlier, paint the whole thing red and then constantly add a little bit of yellow. While that is a great method, the problem is, unless you're doing a one-off model, it's hard to constantly replicate those shades all the time because of how much you add into it. And it can be a little bit difficult to kind of get a bit of parity, especially if you're doing along a bit of a big force across the board, you want your colors to match. So that's why I've opted not to do it this way. But it is, it's a lovely method. And you know, it's definitely something to try out and I probably will do. But as you can see here, I've just added a little dot of yellow. The nice thing about this, is we can add a little bit of water to it and it almost becomes like a glaze. So in actual fact, it's really, really difficult to not replicate this color in the future because it's so subtle. If it's a little bit brighter, if it's a little bit darker, it doesn't really matter because you can just glaze it almost on. Glazing is a really thin layer of paint and it will dry really quickly and give you a really subtle blend and a bit of a subtle transition. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow some of the sharpest creases 
as you can see just down here with this kind of brighter orange mix and effectively this is the way forward we're just going to constantly do this building up those highlights now one thing i do want to talk about is why is like things like white yellow and orange difficult to paint and it's because of the way the paint it has to be made it's naturally thinner because there's the, the pigment in it, it it's it's a lot thinner so you have to build up multiple coats and that's where the problem arises from yes there are companies out there i've heard really good things about the army paint war fanatic paints um, being one coat stuff which is great however i do think that there's a um you're going to have to always kind of err on the side of caution with stuff like that because you, you, you're building a color with a load of pigment in that shouldn't have a load of pigment in. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not like a paint manufacturer or anything like that, but I do believe that this is a, a really nice way of, of kind of doing it. And it's a lot easier and a lot more forgiving, so that's why I've, I've done it this way. But just take your time, that's all you've got to do. If you wanted to dry brush this stage on, you probably could, and just give it a little flick to focus in towards the ends would probably do you, you know, just as good. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of Ushabti Bone. This is almost like a bony cream colour, but it's on the same scale of yellow. So effectively what I'm doing now is I'm almost making like a, a limey kind of colour that's a bit more creamy, which is you know what we want as a really, really nice highlight. And for this, I'm just going to focus on really sharp edges. What you can effectively do is just add little dots of paint each time to make your paint effectively become Ushabti Bone and get really, really those nice kind of, you see a lot of Spanish painters and continental painters do it. They almost like highlight up to white with no matter what they do. And it looks fantastic. Um, so you can kind of really replicate that with this. Now, that's the ultimate kind of part of the cloth kind of done. It, it looks great. It's got a really, really nice smooth finish. Everything's been watered down nicely. You haven't worried about thinning your paint because your wet palette has done all the heavy lifting for you. The next thing we are going to do though, we're going to look at those, those deep recesses. Like I said earlier, contrast can be a little bit blotchy when it dries. So I'm going to get the next paint down from Chikara Orange that I have. This is Wild Rider Red. It's a really, really nice bright red. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a tiny bit out on my palette. Like I haven't got a lot there at all. Um, I am going to add some water to it. And I am using the hard palette for this because I want to be in control here. I'm going to add a little bit of water just to make it flow better. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Lamia Medium and I'm going to add some of this to that mixture. I only need a little bit. I only want to make it just run and flow a little bit better. And as you can see, I'm just mixing it slowly as much as I need. I'm not taking, you know, too much and then wipe the excess off. We want to be really in control here. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it onto those recesses. Now, I don't know why I've done this ever so slightly off camera. I do apologize. I'll try and zoom in on the footage. Um, all it's going to do is it's going to take that blotchiness away. You can see it here. I got to admit, I, I really struggle with painting on camera. I, you know, what do I do with my hands? They're always in the way. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going to work into those recesses and when it dries it's just going to take that blotchiness away give you a nice solid color and it's going to you know really finish off your your model so we've gone for almost like a bit of a deep red in the recesses and just work your way around the model obviously every cape is going to be different but the, the principle applies for absolutely all of it and then i'm just going to tidy this guy up a little bit and we'll have a look so there's the cape completely finished as you can see, we've got some really, really nice highlights. It almost folds to like a yellow and then into a cream, but we've also got that lovely orange color. Now you can see here, this is the Cursed Blood. I've done exactly the same thing. I, I paint one by one, so this doesn't wasn't done at the same time. And as you can see, it's pretty consistent. Once again, this is a really forgiving method. And I think sometimes you need to take that little leap of faith just to mix a little bit of paint here and there and you will get a better effect. And you'll also be a better artist for it. So there we go. I'm gonna finish this guy off and I'll put him on the spinny thing at the end with some of the other ones I painted so you can see. Uh, I really, really like these models actually. I'm having an absolutely fantastic time with them. 
But that's it from me in this one. I hope this helped. I can appreciate I've rambled in a lot. I'll see you all next time. God bless and take care. Thank you.